Yo, what is going on, guys? It is your boy, Cecil, here bringing us a video here today where you guys my five things I wish I knew before starting graphic design. A long time coming, but let's just hop into it. Starting off with number one, learn your program. Now, I'm not saying where your text tool is located. I'm more or less saying the things that you don't even know exist understand that they do exist like for example here are three things i know for sure might surprise you if you guys are a big fan of putting mood boards outside your work canvas something like illustrator right which happens to be really great for people with one monitor in photoshop as long as you guys use artboards on your create new document you can actually drag and simulate an illustrator workflow within photoshop bet you know that Second thing, if you guys are actually people who group layers for individual compositions, like one group is one image and the other group is the other image, hold control and select each of those layers and right click and choose export as. And then when you guys choose your format, you can save everything way, way faster. And I don't know about you guys, but when saving fonts and saving your OTFs, your TTFs, all that stuff in your computer one by one, just know. You can actually drag each and every one of your font formats inside this one place to quickly install them by going into your start menu, typing in fonts, then select font settings and drag your fonts in there and you're done. Literally done. Now for number two of five things I wish I knew, it's creating storyboards or mood boards for your projects. Why? Well, I mean, do you enjoy being stressed? actually don't answer that but having images that you search for with an objective in mind for your client is quite literally life-changing i actually have a recent video on this by the way i know for sure will help you guys if you have no idea what i'm saying however giving yourself a vision of related concepts or themes color schemes things like that anything that you can put together to help you basically your research before a project and if you don't catch my drift research means stealing like an artist just saying not only will it push your creativity forward, but it'll really help the process of having that creative block moment where you're honestly getting creative block because you're trying to design with uninspired ideas. Now, number three is to create visual pillar words that you can later define what it means. For instance, I had a project last year that I did for Valorant that had a campaign of the slogan, Fear None. My visual key words for that project was demonic, chaos, monstrous, and fire. This actually led me to using effects like tattooing logos in their face, having like some really cool glowy eyes, a scattered logo pattern to kind of simulate fire, and even a group of text elements that we can later use to add some chaos to a piece. This will not only help your creative objective, but people surrounding the other parts of the creative can actually assist in the art direction. So when passing it to like editors, motion designers, logo designers, whatever that needs to be done, you have like a visual Bible to give to them and say, hey, this is what we're looking for. As long as it feels like this, I can understand where you're coming from. So that way everyone's on the same page. And for longer lasting campaigns, whether if it's like a campaign for the entire year for a certain objective, having that umbrella of different terms to kind of define what that objective is from the very beginning will actually help you maintain a very consistent visual language throughout the rest of the year. Now, number four is pretty important. And that's understanding that design doesn't just start with the effects, but actually starts with the photography, type choices, color schemes, and its clarity. So in other words, asset gathering takes skill. Starting out, it's very easy to take a photo that you love and design over it. Then of course, taking a step back and finding out that you might not enjoy it as much. When in actuality, the example in this head-to-head -head graphic here, I failed to create much tension or the correct emotion in these photos. And with just the switch of the photos and not the design, the clarity of the design becomes much stronger. When you guys are going into creating an art direction, it usually starts with with words that later get translated into visuals. So the more you look at other designs of what makes them successful, the more you notice that it's not the actual effects or flashy blurs or distortions, but the fonts, photography, and maybe the tension that's created. That happens to be part of balance in the seven principles of design. Balance, rhythm, pattern, emphasis, contrast, unity, and movement which usually all have to do with the design of the composition, but also not to forget the design started the moment you went searching for Google for those supporting assets. And lastly, for number five is having a client experience one to remember. For example, start getting comfortable with asking the client what the preferred method of contact is, whether they actually like to call to address their needs or actually continue emailing back and forth or using a different messaging service like a Discord or a Twitter DM. From my experience, calling has always been my favorite way to actually help curate an idea and understand the needs of the person faster, which I'm not blind to the fact that it's probably harder for younger talent to actually do that or if you guys have like social anxiety I i'm sure that's a thing however i really want you guys to consider it because the back and forth communication is one of the most strongest ways to actually understand a client's needs like i said before but it also makes the connections of yourself and the client a lot more stronger and stronger connections might mean they return or you get recommended and besides that if you guys actually have like a consistent package design request from your clients with like easy to separate tiers maybe make a design like i did it personally like a few years back that gave a list of each and every single tier but also gave the person that is asking very immediate and clear information of what they will get and usually if the price is of course right they'll pick the correct tier and also help you eliminate the idea of like typing in what that you know what the number magic number is for them to say yes to 
it helps that too. Because then in their head, they can budget for it and be like, hey, I like tier two, but if we can just minus this and minus this many more dollars, will that make sense? Yes, it will. Okay, send the payment invoice and there you guys go. So with that being said, hopefully my five things that I wish I knew helps you guys. But also, if you guys have been in design for a little bit and still stumbled upon this video, let me know what your favorite thing is that you kind of, you wish you would have known that first moment you opened Photoshop or whatever you guys ended up opening up that can hopefully help somebody else in the future that's watching this video right now so with that being said since we hq out you're gonna get to keep smiling stay positive and stay a freaking productive guys later much love peace enjoy your day